All right, problem 532 in the fifth, sorry, in chapter five in the 13th edition. Okay, it's, it's late, Friday afternoon, quite tired. Let's go for it. Okay, we have this jib crane. So essentially what we have here is this, um, this cantilever beam, essentially, and it's being supported by uh, this rod, a, a B. Okay, and it is supported at C by a pin connection. Okay, that's important to know because a pin connection can only support um, translation in the X and Y. It doesn't support a moment. If this was a fixed support, then it would also support a moment, which means we would not most probably not need that, although it's always helpful. Okay, but if we if we didn't have this um, this uh, this connection here from A to B, this rod, then this would just simply fall down because we don't have a, uh, I don't know why this is not, there we go, okay? This would just simply fall down because we don't have a connection which is resisting the moment which is caused by this, this weight, okay? And as you can see, this weight can move up and down like this. And the question is, this, um, this rod here, AB, can support a maximum tension of 40 kilonewton. Maximum tension. Okay? And, at, and what we know is, as we move this, this um, weight further and further away, the moment increases. Right? Which means just intuitively that it's going to keep increasing the tension in here. But the maximum tension that this, this rod can, can withstand is 40 kilonewton. Okay? So we need to find what is the maximum distance that this weight can be so that it doesn't, essentially doesn't break this supporting rod. Okay? So we need to draw our free body diagram. Okay? So here's the beam. There's the beam. And what do you notice about this, this rod? It is a it's a two force member, right? What do we know about a two force member? Let's let's just recall a two force member. Maybe I'll just do that all again. But a two force member, there there it is. A two force member essentially, um, if it is in equilibrium, if a two force member is in equilibrium. Then what? Then what? What, what, what? Then the forces, whichever direction, whether there's our, there's our member, then the forces must be equal. They must be opposite. And they must be collinear. Right? The equal and the opposite tell us that the sum of the forces is zero, which means we've got equilibrium. And the collinear part, right, which also, yeah, the collinear part tells us that the sum of the moments is zero, right? Because the, the, the moment arm D equals is zero, right? So these two forces, for a, a two-force member, right, to be in equilibrium means that the forces are equal, opposite, and they are collinear. They're passing through the same line of action. Okay? So, whenever we see a two-force member, right, there's a, there's a two-force member. There's a force applied there and a force applied there. It is in equilibrium. That member is in equilibrium, which means that those forces must, must pass through each other to cancel each other out and to cancel the moment out. Okay? So, what's the point that I'm trying to make? point I'm trying to make is we know the direction of that force. The direction of that force, if AB, which is along that rod, or the direction of that force AB is directed along that rod. Okay? And we've got this weight of, of D, this weight of the mass, and because this is a pin support, we replace this with only a CY and a CX. There's no moment reaction but, uh, due to a pin support. Okay? All right. So there we have our free body diagram. We now need to essentially solve 
for x. We know what FAB is. The maximum that FAB can be is 40 kilonewton. Okay? So that's the information. That's our limiting force. We know that FAB, the maximum it can be is 40. So now we need to determine this distance x so that it doesn't, so that this force does not cause this FAB to exceed 40 kilonewton. Okay? So, uh, the one thing that we need to now determine, because if we want to take moments about, say, this point, we need to determine what this angle is, okay? And what we know is that was 3.2, that was 4, okay? So theta, I just worked it like this. You can, you can obviously do it in another way. You're using um, ratios. Theta is just tan to the minus 1 of opposite over adjacent. And I got second function tan, 3.2 divided by 4. I got 42 comma, say, 96 degrees. Okay? 42 comma 96 degrees. So what's the next thing that we can do? So now we say sum of the moments about C is equal to zero. Okay? So what, what's very important to realize is that that force AB is applied at 0, 0,2 ab above this, this point here, right? So this force, the point is this force, if you break it up into its x, and into its y, sorry for these terrible drawings, both of those force, both of the components of FAB will cause a moment about CX. All right, let me show you the original. Okay, I don't know why it's not focusing. There we go. So FAB is acting along that rod, that strut, and it has both an, a y component and an x component, and it's acting it's acting slightly above that point C. Do you see that? So the X component will cause a moment and the Y component will cause a moment together with the, with the moment due to this. Okay? So the first one we need is moment due to these forces. So what would this be? That, F, that X component would be 40 cos 42,96. And this um, vertical component will be 40 sine 42,96. Okay, those are the two components there. So let's look at that. This, this horizontal component will cause a anti-clockwise moment. So that will be plus, so we say 40, cos 42,96. And what is the moment arm? It is 0,2. This vertical component will also cause a anti-clockwise moment. So that's plus 40 sine 42,96. And that distance, right, if you look, was 4. That length there is 4. So that is times 4. And then we've got this weight acting down here at a moment arm of x. And that is essentially what we're looking for. And this weight, they said, was 2 megagrams, which we know is 2,000 kilograms. So the weight, sorry, I said the weight is 2 megagrams. That's incorrect. That, that is the mass. The mass is 2 megagrams, which is 2,000 kilograms. The weight is 2,000 times 9,81. That's what it is. Okay, so... We've got this, this weight, but we know that the weight is causing a clockwise moment, so it's minus 2,000 times 9,81, and the moment arm is x, and that equals 0. All right? Then if you solve for this, okay, I left, I left my solution somewhere else, so I'm just going to have to quickly calculate this, 40 
cos 42,96 times 0.2 plus 40 sine 42,96 times 4 equals divided by 2,000 divided by, uh, I made a mistake, it should be 40, 40, it should be 40 kilonewton here, it should be 40 kilonewton, so the error was there, but if you put in 40 kilonewton and you solve for x, you should get something to the effect of 5,41 meters, okay? Then just have a look at that, you know, just just evaluate that critically. I mean, that is that is 4 meters, that's just past there, so does 5.41 seem seem realistic to you? I think so, and I'm pretty sure that that's the solution. Okay, and then using using that information, um, then we can just say some of the forces in the y equals zero, um, and we just solve like that, right? A y, uh, sorry, c y, c y plus forty sine forty two comma nine six minus 2,000 times 9,81 should equal 0. Solve for Cy. And then we have sum of the forces in the x equals 0. And we have Cx minus 40 cos 42,96 equals 0. And you solve for Cx. I'm not sure, 100% sure what they are. And I don't want to waste your time by doing the calculation, but I hope you've um, hope you've seen essentially how to solve this problem. Okay, cheers.